Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the world of home tech with me, your host, Paul Hibbert. So, this happened. Ugh, dirty, dirty, expensive things. This is dull. I'm not showing you these things. Go away with you. So why would someone cheap, like myself, buy something expensive like this? Well, the reason is I like to make things like this do things that they're not meant to do. And I've managed to get this, which is only supposed to control infrared devices, to control light switches and plug sockets that are controlled by RF, normally. So how have I done this? Well, I have had to use one of these. Don't go anywhere, I can see you reaching for the dislike button and about to leave. This thing costs like 30, 40 pounds off the internet now, super, super cheap. And if you don't want to use it as a TV, you can just stick it under your set-top box and then control lights and plug sockets using this. I've done this with IFT, again, don't go anywhere. I know you're panicking and going, oh, that sounds scary. I promise you it isn't. That's the whole point of this tutorial. And what did you expect? Hmm. Do you love your Harmony Hub? But you don't want to spend 10 minutes following a YouTube tutorial? You're in luck. Here at Tutorials For You, we'll show you how you can dance an Irish jig around your remote and make artificial intelligence fairies come out and fix it for you. Because it is unfortunately not that simple, you're going to have to watch 10 minutes of me doing stuff with an Android box. Enjoy. So we're going to basically do things in reverse order. What we're going to do is we're going to create like the end point, the thing that we want to happen, and then we're going to work our way backwards and create the trigger point, which is me pressing the remote control. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up if this then that. If I haven't explained what ift is, ift is basically a software that lives on the internet that can make pretty much anything link to pretty much anything. Uh, so this thing could take your Nest thermostats and when it reaches a certain temperature, switch your Philips Hue lights on if you connect those two services together and create that recipe. And it's so easy to use, it's ridiculous. So any kind of scary words I use, honestly, just let them float over your head until you've seen me do what I'm doing and then you realize it's actually dead easy. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to my applets and we're going to press this plus button up here because we want to create a recipe. And as we create the recipe, it's going to ask us to join those services up. So we're going to say if this happens, uh, we're going to search for the service called webhooks. Webhooks is an inbuilt if this then that service uh, that they created to listen for requests on HTTP. Uh, don't worry if you don't know what HTTP is, you don't need to. We're going to say receive a web request because it's the only option anyway, and now it's asking us connect webhooks to ift because every service has to be connected to your accounts before you can use it. Uh, so we've now told it to connect. It now wants to know the event's name that we're going to listen to, so it's asking for the this. Uh, and your event name we're going to call, in this instance, bedroom lamp on. All in one word, no spaces. Uh, so this event is what it is listening for, and we're going to create a few, because I've got a few lights, and I want to be able to switch them on or off. And therefore I need to create two events for each light. One on, one off. So this first event name we're creating is called bedroom lamp on, and it's going to listen to that and trigger whatever we put in the that. So it's listening for, in webhooks, uh, bedroom lamp on, so we're going to go to that and we're going to search for our lights. So if you've got a Philips Hue product you wanted to switch on, you don't need it for this because you could just use the inbuilt stuff. But if that was what you wanted to use, for example, you could search for Philips Hue. We're going to search uh, for me. We're going to search for Ewe Link. Ewe Link! Uh, because that is the software that uh, Sonoff happens to use to switch their devices on and off. Uh, so I'm going to link Ewe Link to Ift so that I can control all of my lamps, all of my plug sockets in eWeelink. So I'm going to say turn one channel plug on or off. And the first thing it says is, I don't know who you are, tell me who you are. So I'm going to say connect. And it therefore takes me to the eWeelink page so I can sign in. So all of this is completely secure. This is taking me outside of Ift to say I need to log in to eWeelink because eWeelink won't let Ift do that without me saying it's okay to do that. Uh, so I'm going to go to the uh, United Kingdom, of course, because that's where I live. And I'm going to log in. 
So I've obviously already set up my Sonoff plug sockets in Ewe Link, uh, and you can see that Ift immediately finds them. So Ift now, because it's able to log into Ewe Link, because they are now connected, can find my bedroom lamp, and it can turn it on or off. Uh, and I wanted to turn it on for this particular trigger, so I'm going to save that. So if you wanted to, you could receive notifications when this applet runs, but that'll drive you mad. Don't do that. So we're going to hit finish. Uh, and we've created our event, so bedroom lamp on, then turns on the bedroom lamp. And that is IFT set up. So that's all well and good, but how do we get IFT to actually trigger that in the first place from this device? We need a way to get the Android device to connect into IFT uh, to trigger that in the first place. And we're going to use some software called Join, which has been made by the amazing Joe or Jow. I have no idea how to pronounce his name because I'm terrible at pronouncing names. Uh, and we're going to go into um, his menu up here and we're going to go to Join on other systems because we want to join his Join app to If This Then That. And he's handily created a way of doing that very easily. You click on Ift here and then add it to your devices. And it basically says, who are you? I don't know who you are. So we now need to go and ask Ift for a key so that we can put the key into Join so that Join is able to join to Ift. Uh, so to do that, we're just going to open Ift again. I'm going to go back to the main screen, go to Services. And in Services, you can see Webhooks. And these are the services we've connected to Ift. Uh, in the webhooks, we're going to go to the settings button, and you can see we've got our key here. This is actually the key at the end. The easiest way to get to it is to click on it so it opens it up in a web browser so that we can just take the big load of uh, numbers and letters at the end of it. Uh, so that's our key there. So I'm going to copy that to my clipboard, and I'm going to go back to join, and I'm going to paste it in there. And then I'm going to press OK. It's now registering on the if this then that server so that the two things can be combined together to act as one. And you can see it says device added. Find it in your device list. Okay, so now we've joined join to if we're going to go to the menu button up here and we're going to create an action. And this action is the thing that's going to trigger if to do what we need if to do to switch my plug socket on. Uh, so the action, we're going to press a plus button down here. Uh, and we're going to press custom. And the command name was bedroom lamp on, because that's the thing that Ift is listening for. And we're going to say select the devices and choose Ift, because that's where we want to send it to. We're going to put bedroom lamp in the command in exactly the same way, again, all in one word, and press done. You'll find you've got bedroom lamp on. Uh, and if I click that, and then drag it up from the bottom, and press run, that has switched my plug socket on, so that has actually worked. So my Android box is now capable of going to Ift, and Ift is capable of going to my plug socket, and my plug socket switches on when I press that button. So all we need to do now is create uh, a button on our remote that will control this uh, action to make this action happen. So we're going to go back to home again. Uh, we need to open Tasker because we need Tasker to be running, but we don't actually need to do anything in Tasker at the moment. We just need the screen open. So go back home again and go to Buttons Remapper. So Buttons Remapper is designed for uh, fixing buttons that are broken. So if you click a button on your remote and the thing that you expect to happen doesn't happen, this thing can remap the button to do the right thing. Uh, but it also has this incredible ability to send tasks to Tasker, and that's why we use Tasker in between this and Join. So if I click on the plus button at the bottom here and then go to Short and Long Press, uh, where it says Back at the moment, that's the default key, I'm going to change that to Other. And it's now listening for me pressing the button in real life. So if I press the button on my remote that I intend to control my plug socket, it hears it, and it's, it's detected it as numpad underscore comma, whatever that means. Uh, then I've got action that I want it to perform, so I'm going to press the action button, scroll down to other, and I'm going to say I want you to perform a shortcut, and that shortcut is a tasker shortcut. Uh, and then it's asking me if I want to create a new task in Tasker, because it's Tasker that is going to control join, which is in turn going to control ift. Uh, so the task, again, I'm going to paste in the same thing, bedroom lamp on. And then OK. And then click to add action, because we want it to do something. And we're going to choose plug in. 
and then join because it's join that we want to control. What do we want join to do? We want join to perform an action and then you just press this little configuration button up here, join action, bedroom lamp on. Tick the box, uh, go back and we now have a join action which is bedroom lamp on. Uh, Tasker I think makes you choose an icon for this in case you wanted to add an icon to your desktop that will generate this action so we're just going to choose any old icon. Application icon and then we'll pick join I guess that makes sense. So you can see I've got a little join icon here now. Uh, I'm going to go back one more time and that will now work. So if I press OK to that so if I scroll to the bottom now, you can see my shortcut bedroom lamp on will be triggered when the key numpad underscore comma is pressed on my remote control. Uh, that in turn will trigger tasker, tasker in turn will trigger join, join will trigger ift, ift will trigger ewe link, and ewe link will switch my lamp on. So I'm going to press the button now, check it works. And you'll see bedroom lamp on was performed and I've just heard it come on. Ta-da! It all works! I'd like to take this a step further. At the minute, I'm using this red button to switch the lights on and off, and I'll probably use the green, yellow, and blue buttons for the lamps around my room. What I'd like to do really, ultimately, is have the touch screen have like a bulb icon on it that I could press to do the same thing. That'd look way more professional. Logitech have made that seriously difficult and potentially even impossible because they won't let you rename devices or buttons so they'll only let you rename activities but I shall not give up. That is a video for another day. In the meantime, if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see some more of this guy, hit that subscribe button. And as usual, there are links in the description to help support my channel for both my PayPal and my Patreon. I'll see you next time. Ladies and gentlemen, no. Cause that's the kind of thing I do. Yeah, it's gonna be 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 be. It's gonna be you boo We make them do what they don't want you to do. It's because I like, ah, I like making things. Now I've managed to get it to control RF devices such as light switches and plug sockets that cost very cost very little money.